Money Incorporated were a heel tag team in the WWF that were put together towards the end of 1991, existing in the World Wrestling Federation until the summer of 93. The individual gimmicks of Ted DiBiase, better known as the Million Dollar Man, and Mike Rotunda, best known as Erwin R. Scheister, seemed to be made for each other, with one man being a millionaire that felt he could buy success in both his personal and professional life, and the other was a hard-up tax man who spoke down to wrestlers and fans for tax avoidance. The characters of Money Incorporated, or Money Inc., were all about wealth, and it should come as no surprise to learn that Vince McMahon himself was responsible for coming up with both respectful gimmicks. Ted DiBiase was legitimately given a lifestyle of luxury by the WWF in order to kayfabe the general public, and IRS was born out of McMahon's own contempt for the tax man. Money Incorporated, in general, aren't really talked about all that often, even though they were a successful team, and I think this is because so many of their big matches and moments were not recorded for television broadcast. There's some important bouts featuring DBOC and IRS that were only seen by fans in attendance, and therefore, laying out a cohesive retrospective has always been a little tricky, but I'll give it a go here as we look at the story of Money Incorporated in the World Wrestling Federation. Ted DiBiase was already a well-established and instantly recognisable WWF superstar at the time of Money Inc.'s formation. With Virgil by his side, the Million Dollar Man had flaunted his wealth consistently on WWF programming, whether it was paying the public to perform tasks for his own amusement, or even paying wrestlers to assist DiBiase with his career goals. The WWF done an incredibly good job with the Million Dollar Man's television presentation, the vignettes, the challenges he would lay out the fans his entrance gear, his theme song, the Million Dollar Man gimmick was, and still is, a fine example of what can be achieved when the company goes all in and sticks the course. It would be absolutely criminal though to overlook Ted DiBiase's performance of the character. DiBiase brought the character to life with his cocky promos, his unwavering confidence in the power of money, and of course, the Million Dollar Man's laugh. All of these made for one of the best heels of the late 80s and early 90s WWF. Take away the character and you also have an extremely competent wrestler. DiBiase had been working in the ring since 1974, making waves mainly in Mid-South and also travelling frequently to all Japan in order to sharpen his skills. The Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, in my opinion, was one of the World Wrestling Federation's best complete packages, a perfect character and an excellent wrestler behind it. Mike Rotunda was no slouch either. Most fans will remember Rotunda previously from his days in the US Express, and afterwards Mike would join Kevin Sullivan's Varsity Club and Jim Crockett Promotions thanks to his amateur wrestling background. There's some really underrated Varsity Club matches out there, check out their matches with the Road Warriors and the Steiners to get an idea of how good they were at working as a heel team. While WWF fans cheered the team of Mike Rotunda and Barry Windham during their days as the original US Express, it was really Mike's portrayal of the IRS character from 1991 that was most memorable. Erwin R. Scheister was, what's the best way to put this? He was a character that Vince McMahon created out of his own pettiness, I guess. McMahon felt that sometimes the best way to get back at people that annoyed him was to make a wrestling gimmick out of his own personal disdain. It really does sound like something a young child would do, but yeah, a fair amount of WWE WWF characters were born from Vince's desire to get revenge on the things that annoyed him in life. Historically, Vince McMahon has had problems with the Internal Revenue Service, whether it be through the taxation of sports entertainment or his own personal taxes that, at one point, impacted his wife Linda's aspirations of beginning a political career. Vince's quick fix was to give us IRS, not the Internal Revenue Service, but Erwin R. Scheister, a heel wrestler who would aggressively remind fans to cough up their taxes while beating up superstars who failed to pay their share. It was silly, no doubt about it, but Rotunda went all in with the gimmick and along with this, he was a really solid wrestler. Mike's first WWF pay-per-view match as IRS occurred at SummerSlam 1991 when he defeated Greg Valentine. 
Also at SummerSlam 91, the Legion of Doom defeated the Nasty Boys in an entertaining no DQ match to win the WWF Tag Team Championships. Jimmy Hart was managing the Nasty Boys along with another tag team, the Natural Disasters, and the Disasters became the number one contenders for the Road Warriors' newly won tag titles. For months, Earthquake and Typhoon would challenge the Road Warriors for the championship belts, but they could never win the gold, and around the same time, Ted DiBiase and IRS had been teaming up on the house show loop with a few of their earlier matches making it to television and Coliseum video. By and large, the official formation of Money Inc. wasn't really put out there for fans to see. In February of 1992, Jimmy Hart accepted a bribe from the Million Dollar Man and Erwin R. Scheister, and for a handsome sum of money, Jimmy sold a contract to Money Inc. that would give them an instant WWF Tag Team title shot against the Road Warriors, a contract that was supposed to go to Earthquake and Typhoon. This resulted in the natural disasters turning babyface and ditching Jimmy Hart, and Jimmy sided with Ted DiBiase and IRS. Money Inc. won the WWF Tag Team titles at a Denver, Colorado House show on the 7th of February 1992. It was quite strange at the time for titles to change at untelevised events, but Road Warrior Hawk had failed a wellness test and therefore the championships needed to go to another team. This created a little bit of confusion too because the tag title change wasn't acknowledged immediately on TV due to the taped nature of WWF shows. So yeah, if you feel like Money Inc. just kind of showed up out of nowhere and instantly became successful, that's because they did just show up out of nowhere and they did become successful right away, with the majority of the early work happening away from television screens. Earthquake and Typhoon wanted to get their hands on both Jimmy Hart and the WWF Tag Team Championships. WrestleMania 8 was the place, Money Inc. defending the gold against the natural disasters. You know, by 1992 WWF Tag Team standards, there was a decent little story going into this match and with the absence of the Road Warriors, the WWF were trying to turn a negative into a positive. It's just a shame then that the Money Inc. vs Natural Disasters match at WrestleMania 8 didn't really deliver in terms of in-ring action. Keep in mind though that the natural disasters were more of an attraction than anything else. People didn't pay to see John Tanta and Fred Altman put on wrestling masterpieces, and back in the early 90s wrestlers could get by on their size alone. Watching the match back nowadays is a little tough, but back in 1992 a lot of casual fans of the WWF didn't really care. It can feel unfair sometimes going back and critiquing matches like this due to how much wrestling has evolved, but still, with all things considered, you can still do better than Money Inc. versus the Disasters at WrestleMania. People also complain about the finish, but I thought it was great heel work. IRS and the Million Dollar Man simply said nope, and Money Inc. walked out of the match, gladly taking a count out victory in order to keep the tag titles. It's the ultimate cowardly champion move, and I thought it was fine for this match. It fit into the characters of Money Inc. Following WrestleMania 8, the Disasters vs Money Inc match was put on the road and the finish was pretty much the same every night. Money Inc would walk out and the bouts ended via countout. On TV though, IRS and Ted DiBiase would largely face job guys, they were pretty dominant on television shows. Things again got strange when the Road Warriors returned to TV screens and Money Inc vs The Legion of Doom was booked as a tag team title match in the run up to SummerSlam, but IRS and DiBiase dropped the titles to the not disasters before the pay-per-view took place. The title change strangely happened during a dark match for a Superstars TV taping, but this didn't alter the planned LOD vs Money Inc SummerSlam match. Ted DiBiase and IRS still worked against Hawk and Animal, albeit without the tag team titles on the line, and the Legion of Doom were able to beat Money Inc in Wembley Stadium when Animal pinned DiBiase. The Natural Disasters meanwhile defeated the Beverly Brothers, successfully defending their tag team titles in the process. Money Incorporated were able to recapture the tag titles when, once again, Jimmy Hart favoured DiBiase and IRS over one of the other tag teams who had benefited from his managerial services. This time, it was the Nasty Boys. 
Hart chose Money Inc. over the Nasties, and Money Inc. even tried to give the Nasty Boys some money to make up for it, but the Nasty Boys attacked DiBiase and IRS, effectively turning babyface and leaving Jimmy Hart. DiBiase and Shyster defeated the Natural Disasters with a little help from the Head Shrinkers, and so Money Inc. had their next feud lined up with Jerry Sags and Brian Nobbs. At the Survivor Series 1992 show, the team of Money Inc. and the Beverly Brothers squared off with the Natural Disasters and the Nasty Boys. Money Inc. were able to eliminate Earthquake and Typhoon, but Jerry Sags pinned IRS to win the match. Over the next few months, the Nasty Boys would challenge Money Inc. for the tag titles, but they could never defeat Ted DiBiase and IRS. Next up is probably the rivalry that Money Inc. are most well remembered for. On the February 15th, 1993 episode of Raw, Ted DiBiase worked against a returning Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Beefcake was wrestling his first match in around two years after a parasailing accident left him with a seriously busted up face. Beefcake had to literally have a new face constructed. Anyway, the DiBiase vs Beefcake match ended when IRS got involved, hitting Brutus on the back with his briefcase. Money Inc then got in position to hit Beefcake in the face with the briefcase. Jimmy Hart tried to stop DBOC and IRS, but Jimmy got tossed out of the ring. IRS smacked Beefcake with the briefcase, and Raw ended with Brutus getting stretchered away while Jimmy Hart showed a lot of concern. The next week on Raw, the immortal Hulk Hogan made his return to the WWE. The Hulkster said he watched Money Inc. attack his best friend, and Hogan told the fans that while Brutus Beefcake is a little banged up, the barber will be okay. Thank God. Hulk thanked Jimmy Hart for standing up for what's right before calling Brutus the Bionic Barber Beefcake to the ring, and Brutus stumbled through a promo where he pretty much just repeated what Hulk just said. Jimmy Hart was then introduced as Hogan and Beefcake's new manager. Hart said that his latest clients will be the greatest tag team of all time. Hogan named the trio the Mega Maniacs, and Money Inc. would go on to face Beefcake and Hogan at WrestleMania 9. At WrestleMania, held in the Caesars Palace parking lot, the Mega Maniacs were unable to defeat Money Inc. for the tag titles. Hulk Hogan used Beefcake's protective face mask as a weapon during the match. Jimmy Hart played referee for a moment, making a three count that wouldn't stand. Referee Danny Davis disqualified Hogan for using the face mask. And the Mega Maniacs got the last laugh when they opened up IRS's briefcase to throw money out to the fans in attendance. Hogan would end up winning the WWF title later in the evening. And as for Brutus Beefcake, WrestleMania 9 was the Barber's final television appearance for the World Wrestling Federation. Brutus still worked house shows and live events, however, and there was a rematch from the 14th of June 1993 that got recorded and released on DVD. Sergeant Slaughter served as the special referee, and the Mega Maniacs won via disqualification. Money Inc. were still the tag team champions, but their time together was coming to an end. DiBiase wanted to leave the WWF, saying in a shoot interview that he wanted to resolve some marital problems and he felt leaving the hectic schedule of the World Wrestling Federation would definitely help. It seemed like plans were changing a lot here, as the tag titles switched hands three times in the space of six days. On June 14th, 1993, the Steiner brothers beat Money Inc. for the tag team title. Two days later, Money Inc. reclaimed the gold, and then just three days after that, Rick and Scott Steiner once again defeated IRS and DiBiase to reclaim the titles. All of these matches happened again on house shows, seemingly par for the course when it comes to Money Inc. tag team title matches. The Steiners vs Money Inc. did find its way to TV though. The very last bout Money Inc. had together was at the SummerSlam Spectacular TV show that aired on the 22nd of August 93. A steel cage bout that the Steiners won and a match that you should check out on the WWE Network, it's actually pretty good. While this feud with the Steiner brothers was going on, Ted DiBiase was mocking Razor Ramon for losing to the 1-2-3 kid, resulting in the kid also defeating DiBiase. The Million Dollar Man made his last television appearance then of this run at the SummerSlam 1993 show, losing to Razor Ramon and leaving the World Wrestling Federation just for a little while. IRS meanwhile quietly went back to singles competition where he was featured as a mid-card performer. 
This wouldn't be the end of the Ted DiBiase and IRS partnership, although Ted DiBiase wouldn't step into a WWF ring again to compete. In mid-1994, DiBiase returned to the WWF to form his Million Dollar Corporation, a stable of wrestlers who DiBiase was able to lure in with the promise of money. IRS was a member of the corporation along with guys like Nikolai Volkov, Bam Bam Bigelow, Tatanka and King Kong Bundy. The whole Million Dollar Corporation stuff went on when business was at a low point in the World Wrestling Federation. Many people don't really have fond memories of the group and I'll admit it also, it wasn't the most captivating faction in the WWF, but still, the corporation remained active up until mid-1996. When DiBiase and Shyster moved over to WCW, they were briefly together as members of the New World Order, though they didn't really share that much screen time together. Ten years later, at the Raw Family Reunion Show on October 9th, 2006, Money Inc. made a surprise one night return when they stopped the Spirit Squad from interfering in Ric Flair's match against squad member Mitch. And the following year, at the 15th anniversary special episode of Raw, Ted DiBiase paid IRS to eliminate himself from a 15 man battle royal, resulting in Ted winning the match. And that was Money Inc's run in the WWF. It's a shame many of their key matches happened at live events or during dark segments. Even the earliest Money Inc matches aren't available unless you hunt down fan recordings from house shows. For people who enjoy early 90s WWF, particularly WWF tag team wrestling, there's a giant void here in regards to title changes that didn't make it to television and it's very possible that some of these recordings don't even exist. But anyway, what we got on TV was still good. Money Inc, in my opinion, were a great heel tag team with a ton of character and as mentioned earlier, it was almost like the Million Dollar Man and IRS were made for each other with DiBiase's ridiculous spending and IRS promising to write everything off as business expenses. While the Mega Maniacs bout at WrestleMania 9 is what most fans remember, take the time to look at the 1992 run of Money Incorporated. You might be pleasantly surprised by some of their work. Thank you for watching.